The Grand Canyon is one of the most majestic canyons in the world. Its length is 446 kilometers, and its depth reaches 1.8 kilometers. The width of the canyon is equally impressive, with the narrowest part being 6. 4 kilometers and the widest 29 kilometers. Just imagine how many secrets and amazing discoveries are hidden within its territory. In this video, I will tell you about the most impressive of them. Enjoy watching! Before we begin, I suggest we learn more about this incredible place. The Grand Canyon is located in the state of Arizona, USA. It is home to Native Americans from the Navajo, Havasupai, Hualapai, and several other tribes. The indigenous inhabitants of America have known about the canyon since ancient times. Interestingly, the Grand Canyon is not just considered a beautiful national park to them, but a truly sacred place. The Havasupai, for example, believe that this canyon is a gateway to heaven. They hold the belief that every one of them must traverse the Grand Canyon to reach a place where they will be eternally happy with their loved ones, in other words, heaven. Native Americans have lived in the Grand Canyon for over 3,000 years as evidenced by cave paintings in the area. The canyon was officially discovered in 1540 when it was accidentally found by a group of Spanish colonists wandering in search of the seven cities of gold. The Spaniards were amazed by the landscapes here, but they were absolutely unprepared to stay there for long. It was only in 1869 that the first scientific expedition was sent to the Grand Canyon to explore the unknown terrain. Over time, studying the territory helped understand how this place came to be. Over 65 million years ago, tectonic shifts occurred here, as a result of which the plain rose and the Colorado River began to make its way, breaking down the mountain rock. Thus, scientists logically concluded that the Grand Canyon was the result of the erosion of rocks, brought about by the flow of the Colorado. The fact that the Grand Canyon is a creation of natural forces was not questioned until recently. However, modern studies of the surrounding area have not only questioned this fact but have led scientists to reconsider their theory of what happened here in ancient times and even to ponder inconsistencies in the history of mankind. A quite recent discovery, made in 2021 by American researchers, were 60 of the oldest human footprints. After thorough analysis, it was determined that these footprints are about 23,000 years old. This discovery debunked the existing theory of when the first people appeared on the territory of America. According to initial archaeological studies, humans reached the continent about 13,000 years ago. Later, scientists found evidence of the presence of primitive people on the territory of America 15,000 years ago. But this latest discovery shocked archaeologists and anthropologists as they were off by nearly 10,000 years. And the first human foot stepped on the continent's soil before the advancing glaciers closed migration paths from Asia. Another discovery was made by scientists as a result of studying the disappearance of some layers of the canyon. The Grand Canyon formed over 2 billion years. All stages of its development are forever imprinted in its rocks. The lead author of the University of Colorado study, Barra Peak, calls the Grand Canyon a textbook of Earth's history. Indeed, the layers of rock sequentially reflect the geological history from its very inception, and this is noticeable even to the naked eye. However, in some places of the canyon, entire strata are missing which should have spanned hundreds of millions of years. This phenomenon was discovered about 150 years ago and called the Great Unconformity. Modern scientists have been able to find out where the missing plates disappeared. They managed to do this thanks to the method of thermochronology, which determines how rock underwater was heated due to high pressure. Thus, according to scientists, the Grand Canyon heated unevenly, its western part rose high, and the eastern part was under landslides. As a result, in one part of it, the age of the stones at the base averaged 1.5 billion years years while in the other, at the very top, the age did not exceed 500 million years. Scientists associate this with the fact that about 800 million years ago, there was a breakdown of the supercontinent Rodinia in the western part. As a result of the destruction, the canyon's rocks crumbled and fell into the ocean. Thus, the latest research methods have allowed scientists to solve the mystery of the Great Unconformity and fill in missing pieces of information about what happened during this critical period for the Grand Canyon. Moreover, this discovery allows us to imagine how destructive the forces of nature were hundreds of millions of years ago when there weren't even dinosaurs on Earth. Arguably, the most sensational discovery within the territory of the Grand Canyon was made back in the distant 1909. The explorer John Kincaid embarked on a journey along the Colorado River. The focus of his search was minerals, but by chance, he discovered something incredible. While boating along the Grand Canyon, he noticed unusual spots in the sedimentary rocks. This caught his attention and he decided to investigate these objects. Kincaid got out of the boat onto the shore and carefully climbed up the rocks. 
Then he realized that he had found the entrance to a strange cave. He was intrigued to find out what was inside. He walked in the dark for about a hundred meters and stumbled upon a crypt, inside of which were treasures and human remains. The explorer realized that he had just made an extraordinary discovery and decided to report his findings to the Smithsonian Institution. His words piqued the interest of Professor Jordan and they returned to the place together to start a detailed study of the mysterious cave. Kincaid and Jordan began to work together and discovered how fantastic the cave was inside. The main passage in it was about three, five meters wide and went almost one, five kilometers underground. Closer to the end, it connected with some giant chamber from which a series of tunnels branched off in turn. Along these tunnels were many rooms of different sizes. Some were small, while others could reach an area of about 100 square meters. Each room had an oval-shaped door, and ventilation was provided by round airspaces through the walls into the passages. The thickness of the walls was approximately one meter. What surprised the researchers was how evenly the passages were laid out, as if someone had carefully calculated the construction plan. The ceilings of most rooms converged towards the center. The side passages at the entrance were built at an acute angle from the main hall, but gradually reached a right angle towards the back. 30 meters from the entrance to the cave was a huge cross hall in which a statue of a deity in the eastern style was found, sitting with crossed legs and holding lotus flowers in his hands. The precision of the carving and attention to detail indicated the skilled hand of a master and the statue itself, like everything in this cave, was in almost pristine condition. Surrounding the deity were various small images, some of them were beautiful, while others demonstrated distorted body forms. Perhaps this is how ancient people portrayed the struggle of good against evil. The hall also contained very various copper tools. This meant that the people who lived in the cave knew the lost art of tempering this metal. Among other findings in the hall were vases and cups of copper and gold, ceramic dishes, and glazed vessels. Kincaid also mentioned that he saw in the cave even some semblance of a granary, equipped from a hard material resembling concrete. Off to the side of it was a huge room, about 100 by 150 meters, which probably served as a dining hall. Here were also many yellow stones scattered all over the floor. The entire system of tunnels was so extensive that, by some estimates, more than 50,000 people could live in it. Throughout the complex, many carved hieroglyphs were discovered. Their decryption was supposed to be handled by the Smithsonian Institution. These inscriptions resembled those already found on the rocks in this valley. Preliminary estimates suggested that the hieroglyphs and images were related to the religion of the local inhabitants. Surprisingly, similar engraving was also found on the Yucatan Peninsula, but nothing like it was encountered in the East, although many deities were similar to Buddhist ones. Some scientists believe that the old canals in the Salt River Valley were built by people from these caves. It is likely that people lived in this area for a long period of time, and the tunnel system was a genuine city. The most astonishing discovery by Kincaid in Jordan at this location was a vault containing several mummies. Kincaid himself described this vault as follows. The tomb or vault in which the mummies are found is one of the largest chambers, the walls of which are inclined backward at an angle of about 35 degrees. One of them represents tiers of mummies, each of which occupies a separate carved shelf. At the head of each is a small bench on which were found copper cups and fragments of broken swords. Some mummies are covered in clay and all are wrapped in bark fabric. The urns or cups on the lower tiers are crude, while as the higher shelves are reached, the urns become more graceful in design, showing an intermediate stage of civilization. Surprisingly, all the mummies that the two researchers managed to discover belonged to men. Therefore, they concluded that the inner part of the cave was a barracks where warriors were prepared. It should be assumed that the dwellings belonged to indigenous Americans. However, the statuettes of gods and other artifacts more closely resembled creations of Egyptian and Tibetan civilization. Could Egyptians have actually lived in these caves? If so, how did they manage to get to the territory of the Grand Canyon. Kincaid decided to tell the press about his sensational find, and on April 5, 1909, an article titled Explorations in Grand Canyon appeared on the front page of the Arizona Gazette. The article talked about the very archaeological expedition of the Smithsonian Institution, during which an underground citadel was discovered, becoming not only the oldest archaeological monument in America but also the most valuable find in the world. After this publication, no further information about the exploration of the cave appeared in the media and the article was forgotten. However, in 1993, writer David Hatcher, fascinated by mysteries of the past, 
republished this article in Nexus magazine. After that, information about the mysterious cave spread on the internet. In 2000, scientists took a keen interest in the story of finding the strange cave and contacted the Smithsonian Institution. In response, they received no coherent information and took it as a sign that the government had forbidden the details of this story to be told. However, the researchers managed to find mentions of the archaeologist Professor S. A. Jordan, whose surname was spelled slightly differently. It's likely that the Smithsonian Institution intentionally erased Kincaid and Jordan from their records and actively destroyed artifacts that didn't align with the generally accepted human history. Researchers managed to find out that Kincaid made many more discoveries on territory that is government-owned and therefore closed to general access. One of his discoveries was Stanton's Cave, 120 meters deep, in which, allegedly, remains of people over two, five meters tall were found. Naturally, this was hushed up, as it was essentially direct evidence of the existence of giants. The public only learned about ancient Native American relics and skeletons of giant California condors found there, which were about 10,000 years old. The existence of this cave is not a myth. It is listed as a national historical monument. However, its entrance is now closed by huge steel gates. If this cave exists, then it's quite likely that the cave found in 1909 also exists. Many researchers are still obsessed with its search. The married couple Kathy and Jerry will studied information about the mysterious tunnel system for a long time and prepared thoroughly for their expedition. Amazingly, they actually managed to find them. However, the main entrance was located at a great height and it was almost impossible to get there. The couple noticed that near the main entrance there were rope ladders, which were probably left by other explorers. Wills managed to find another more accessible entrance. Once inside, they discovered that it was impossible to enter the cave because the entrance had been meticulously closed with huge concrete slabs. But who needed to hide the cave from prying eyes if there was nothing secret in there? This and much more remains a mystery. There are many inconsistencies in this story. On the one hand, no one has ever seen the relics found by Kincaid, but on the other hand, much more was said about this cave system earlier. In 1869, Major John Wesley Powell and his team descended down the Colorado River and passed through the previously unexplored Grand Canyon. There, Powell discovered a huge cave which he named Redwall. Estimating its size, he said if it were a theater, it could easily accommodate 50,000 people. And in 1889, during the construction of a railway along the Colorado River to California, the Brown Stanton expedition discovered a whole series of cliff dwellings and fragments of broken pottery scattered everywhere. From this, it can be concluded that Kincaid was either inspired by the stories of previous explorers or indeed told the world something people were not supposed to know. What remains surprising is that many archaeologists have found cave dwellings, but somehow research in them is not mentioned. And that's all I have for you. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to rate it, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell. Your activity is the best reward for me. Thanks for your attention. See you soon. Goodbye.